Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review, and this is Evoke by Craig Petty. Before we do this review, please kindly look at onlinemagic.co. That's my membership site. I've been going 10 years. I have been hammering the videos recently, not edited yet, but I have the uh, Royal Roads Card Magic course, which is along with many, many other courses you get for your membership on coin magic, rope magic, sponge ball magic, loads of different card courses, live sessions, how to practice. And oh, what did I do recently? Another one, can't remember. Uh, but the Royal Road course is now 200 pages of the book I've put into a video course over the last couple of years. And uh, it's nearly finished, kind of. So I'm very proud of it. So have a look at that, onlinemagic.co. It's, there is no better way to learn. There might be. I just thought I'd say that because it sounds good. And please like and subscribe. Check out the podcast, Steve Faulkner's Magic Show. I haven't put a podcast out for a couple of weeks because I've been on a deadline, a couple of deadlines and panicking and things have been occurring, but I have a couple in the bag to, uh, to be edited and go live soon. So have a look at that and please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So, Evoke. I am recording this as live. Uh, Craig's just done his live stream. It's now been released. I have not watched it because I've been coaching. So, and I didn't want to, but what I am aware of is that this is out there in the open. Craig has talked about what it does, all the different ideas. So I'm not gonna go over all that, which is a shame because I was going to. Over the weekend, I have watched nine hours, <laughs> nine hours of Craig Petty, lovely Craig Petty for nine hours. Uh, and to be honest, by the end of it, I thought I would hate Craig Petty, <laughs> but I don't. We will go into that in a minute. What I'm gonna do is just break down and give you a rough idea of my genuine thoughts on this. There is a lot of hype around this. Craig showed it to me, sat with me for about 10 minutes, showed me the trailer, talked me through it at the session convention. I'll talk about my initial thoughts and how they kind of changed a bit. And as close to genuine as I can be without having performed it. Now, I have not. I wanted to get footage, but there's just no point. So many people have been asking me. They want to see the review. So I'm just going to give you my thoughts. I, I can see what can be done. I don't have to get footage of me performing. Um, but I may try to in the future, or I might not. So what it is, very briefly, because we've gone through this. This is a deck of cards that are mini motivational posters. And they've got all these lovely quotes on them, some by celebrities, some by uh, not celebrities. Different emotions as you go through. Black and white photos that are the black and white are negative emotions, the colour are positive emotions. There are 13 of each of those. There are two gaff cards. One of these 100 monkey, 100th monkey, 100 monkey principle um, where you can't read it. And so you show someone it and then you say, well, I'm going to take away your ability to read. Show me again. They cannot read the card and then it becomes clear again. There is also a gaff card that is based on an NLP type idea of shrinking your emotions down. And there is a small anxiety card as well. So you show them the anxiety card, put it down at its most basic level. Think about your anxiety, think about it going away, turn it over and it's shrunken down. And it's not prescriptive, meaning, yes, there are loads of routines and I've got pages and pages and pages of notes, but as you know, Pete Turner said, and pretty much everybody on this said that, you know, this is something that you can use for many, many things. And when people say that, you know, it's a utility device, it usually means you can do one really good thing with it, but we've got hours of footage of other stuff you can do with it because we just wanted to make a massive download to give this sort of idea of perceived value. So when Craig said to me with his chirpy little face, there are nine hours of, there's nine hours of tutorials. I was like, oh my, the, the worst thing I want to hear. Because with a big release, I do want to want to watch it all. And watch it all, I did. People were away from my house at the weekend. I could have been on VR playing video games, but I was watching you, Craig Petty, with Peter Nardi, Ian Rowland, and of course, uh, Pete Turner. So I went in, 
And when Craig showed me this, I said to him, it's great. And I, I did think it was great. I genuinely thought it was great. It would have been really awkward had I not. But part of me was sort of going, well, yeah, okay, it's, it's a deck of marked cards. The markings on the back say all manner of things. And we've seen this with Luke Jamey's Marksman deck. You know, it shows you the card that's next in the stack, the cards that's beforehand in the stack, other in information on there, as it does here. So you can use this in a stack or not in a stack. Very, very simple stack. It's like a super easiest man deck in the world. It's alphabetical. So it's very, very easy to remember, but you don't have to remember it because you can read what's on it and what's coming next. And whether it's a positive or negative emotion and information on the photo that's on it, all sorts of stuff. Great. Part of me was still thinking, all right, but you know, it's just a deck of cards really. And it's a, it kind of dressed up slightly differently. But then Craig started talking to me about it and I kind of went, okay, I can really see the power of this. Now I'm someone that has, you know, spoken to people about emotions a lot, not necessarily in a woo-woo way, but you know, they're very important to us. They run our organizations and our world really, and our, you know, our decisions. So there's a lot you can do with it. But what I don't like doing is, you know, pretending I'm doing something mysterious and then dressing up as a magic trick. And I thought, is it a bit of that? And then when Craig said things like, oh, there's an out of this world and there's a, there's these, you know, you can do normal card tricks with it. I just thought, yeah, but then you've sort of changed it to an out of the way. You've kind of taken away from what it is and just turned it into a card trick. But of course I was wrong. Not of course. Well, maybe of course. I'm wrong quite a lot. I'll break it down, the videos. You get nine videos. The first of which, I'm trying to remember it. I want to do this now because it's fresh. So I'm not going to cut in loads of stuff. You don't need it. The first video is Craig talking you through everything that this does. So there's the marking system, the Karam principle, which I really like, actually. There's all these different pictures, but there is only actually five pictures and they're cyclical. There's tree, mountain, ocean, waterfall, flower. That's it, isn't it? Uh, and they're cyclical if in the stack, which is great. If not, you can still read what's on it. So you can do loads of stuff with the image. You know straight away whether it's black or white, whether it's positive or negative. So think about red and black cards. All of a sudden, instead of red and black cards, you've got black and white negative and color positive. So great. And then you've got these two hours of Pete Turner. Now, I, I really like Pete Turner. He's just got some banging good stuff. And he has really geeked out on mentalism for many years. So he does a routine where he's just just improvising. He's just kind of improvising. He sees what he's got. He improvises around it. And I love that. I love his out of this world, you will be able to do it straight away. It's very, very easy, but there's subtleties in it that make it great. I did perform that to my friend this morning. I'd seen it like the morning, two mornings before that on Saturday, and I couldn't remember off it, but it, but it still went really well, and I could check everything because I could see the markings. You can elevate that into something more powerful when you start talking about emotions and i don't mean you know you've got to be careful with this stuff that you jump you don't sound like a kind of someone that knows loads of them about emotions that doesn't you are talking about people's emotions so it's you know you've got to tread lightly and and all this stuff here does really it sounds very heavy when pete's talking about it but it's all quite light you're not going to take anybody down to a dark place and and you know, and I don't think that's a healthy thing, really. So just because you talk about negative emotions, you're not necessarily taking them to a very dangerous, dark, depressing place. So when it says depression on here or depressing or depressed, sorry, you know, that's not licensed to get someone <laughs> you know, to relive some triggering memories. But we can we can use it powerfully in in different ways. And after watching two hours of Pete and Craig, I was I felt energized by it i felt i felt the potential this is all about potential and as pete said it's you know it is something that here are some routines but don't feel trapped with them it's a way and this is one of the main points i think is great about this it's a it's a way to practice all those mentalism but not just mentalism which we'll come to in a minute because I don't think you should just see this as, as that. But all those things that we, are quite scary if we get misses or it doesn't work out, you can practice your cold reading, you know, very simple cold reading skills because you've got this thing to fall back on. And I know that's a lot in the case of mentalism. You know that, you know, you've peaked it, you know it, whatever. So you cold read towards it. But 
there are different avenues you can go with this. So if you get a miss, you can do something else. You can treat that as just a conversation before you do the reveal. And I think that the routines in here really lend themselves to that. It's great training ground for, for your mentalism or to, to just enhance your, your performance. And the simpler the better, if you ask me. So great things where you just do a very simple, someone takes a card out and you work around that. Different color separations on the whole project. When we get to Peter Nardi next, he took a different way of looking at it. Well, slightly different way of looking at it. And I think it was really good to get someone like Pete Turner, who's really full on mentalism. Someone like Peter Nardi, who's a bit more of an all-rounder, well, a lot more of an all-rounder. You know, he knows his stuff, he knows his card tricks. And then someone like Ian Rowland, who came on last minute when Craig said, you know, can you, can you give me a testimonial? And he was like, actually, no, I want to come and talk about this and some ideas I've had, which is great because Ian doesn't really do that sort of thing very often. So Pete Nardi, you know, as soon as he kind of went, right, you can do a poker deal. I was like, why would you do a poker deal with this? Well, you do a poker deal with it because, of course, it's not a poker deal at all. They're not playing cards. So it's just dealing out cards. And there's, you know, if you look at something like uh, Liar's Poker and, you know, many very, very simple tricks using crosscut forces and things like that, they, they are so much better than they are with playing cards. And I'm not saying they're bad with playing cards, but, you know, for someone who's, as I said at the beginning, got a whole course on the Royal Road, I think it's with this, go to that stuff, right? Go to the Royal Road, go to the tricks that are very nice and good with playing cards and go, actually, how can I make this not into oh these are your, this is your card but this is your emotion the emotions that you're thinking of how to group the emotions together and i think there's some i mean there are some strong tricks in royal road but this again elevates them into something different i love pete's stuff i'm not going to go through all that they talked about but you you'll have heard it from craig and i from the end of that again i've, I've done like four hours now in, in total and I was still going, yeah, I'm still thinking this is good. It's a very, very rare thing. And then Craig's got a couple of videos. He's got a video on what, how do you use the stack? And he takes loads and loads of classic tricks. Then how do you use it either when someone shuffled it or you've shuffled it. So you do stack work and then you shuffle it yourself and you go into loads of routines that are again going back to classic routines. Dr. Daly's last trick. Triumph. Got to be a bit careful. These haven't got borders. So the Biddle trick, again, same reason, but... Um, any card at any number, I nearly skimmed that. I kind of, why would you want to do an any card at any number? But he uses age. You know, you think of an emotion you experienced. It doesn't have to be that heavy, but something you experienced in the past. Think about what age you were, and you count down in this really lovely way, which is very, very easy. You know, pretty much self-working. I don't think anything's self-working, but, you know, there's nothing really to do much there. And it's really convincing, you know, for card people. You go, oh, why would you hold the cards like that? But actually, it would totally work. So it lands on the person's emotion at their age, and that's the reveal. He's even got a card to cross, and pretty much any classic card plot you can think of is in there. In well, Peter Turner's, Peter Nardi's, and and Craig's bit. Then. The video with Ian Rowland was great. And Ian said, you know, really, he kept saying at the beginning, you know, I've just thought of some fun things. It's about fun. And it's easy to think of when we think of cold reading and all that kind of stuff as not being fun and being serious. And it made me think this should be a fun thing. Yes, it can be moving and it can be all that stuff. But there are some fun stuff to be done with this as well. And that takes me to this idea of, you know, when you see emotions, we think it's all got to be mentalism and it's all got to be like heavy and that's fine. But I think you could not do any of that and just say, I'm going to use emotions instead of cards. And then you could do things like the rubber dub vanish. We take depression, we make it go away and it turns into something else. And you're not trying to pretend you're not doing a card trick. You're very openly doing a card trick, but you've got a whole different way of presenting it because you've got the pictures, because you've got the black and white, the color, the emotions that it just sounds like something else, even though it isn't. So, yes, if you're doing the mentalism stuff, I would avoid doing things like, you know, visual tricks where something changes for another thing. But actually, if you're open about that and you're not trying to be that person, you're just using a different script, then it opens up a whole different presentation. It's a bit like, you know, I think of John Allen when he says, do an ambitious card, but, you know, don't write a a name, right, a random word, and then all of a sudden your presentation can be improvised around that word. And with this, you you know, they take a card, 
you look at what it is, you do an ambitious card routine, and all of a sudden, you can talk about that word rather than going, oh, it just comes to the top. Not that I think there's anything wrong with that, because I love all that stuff. I don't think it has to mean anything. But if you're someone that loves meaning in your magic, someone like Ian Rowland, who's really important to him that his magic has meaning, then this gives it to you, and it gives you the tools to improvise around that. And I think this is... Uh, uh, the first, you know, the first blush when Craig showed it to me, it was, here's a thing, a bit different than card tricks, it's going to be nice, was a, a little bit kind of, oh, is, is all the hype around this? And then we, you know, as with most things, simple in concept, but complex in what you can do with it. And I think it's great. After nine hours, I wasn't like, right, put that in a box, never going to look at that again. I think there is there's something really fun or really profound in what you do with these. And I wouldn't disregard any of it. Watch it all, but don't watch it all at once. By hour five, I was a bit like, oh, yeah. but then I kind of took a break, went back to it with, with fresh eyes. I've got loads of notes on this. There's loads more to say about this. But, you know, as you know, loads has been said and I could go on for a long, long time. It's not perfect and neither should it be. That's fine. The, I would say near perfect is the marking. Phil Smith has designed this and the marks are stunning. You've, you're reading whole words here and you, you can't spot them unless you really go for it. And, you know, with presentation, nobody's going to have the chance really. But very, a lot of information, very cleverly hidden. Importantly, you know, these are USPCC and you might think, oh, actually that might take away from it, but they don't look like it. You know, they, they've got the feel, they're the size. So if you want to use a double backer, um, a double blank card like Craig does in one of his routines, you can get that. Um, no double backers. Maybe a double backer would have been nice because there's certain things you can do there. Like Pete's got this, Pete Turner's got this ESP matching routine, which is so good. You know, based on a lot of ESP matching routines, which I love. But there's actually a Larry Becker version of that trick with a double backer, which I really, really like. Um, so maybe it would have been nice, something like that. But I'm nitpicking. You don't need it. I think you've got enough. But I was going to say, um, yeah, so the marking's great, the design's great, they look brilliant, they look real, importantly, the box looks real, not that one, but that one looks real, that's got a crib on it as well if you need it, and you've got this, this the Quran principle, the markings, all that, you've got the motherable book test, so there are book test words, so each of these has a quote, and they read the quote, you say, think of a, um, one of their big interesting words on there, and you can get the words, and of course you can then link that word to the emotion you know if you think on your feet uh, you can improvise around that as well so that's great too the celebrity thing it's it's fine it's good it, it for me out of all of it it's this thing i probably wouldn't use as much of it ties in with craig's trick gossip which i reviewed i liked gossip i think it's a nice thing but i'm not sure for me, it, you know, he's got the baby gag he does with it and he uses the gossip cards and that's great without the magazine. It is good stuff. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying for me, it's probably not the one I would use. You've got five celebrities that have written these quotes, real ones, and you can fish for who they are. So they look at it and you can, you can kind of get the person they're thinking of. Then you can do baby gags and stuff like that. Uh, you know, which is fine, but not something I'd probably do. There is something in me that, you know, you've got all these these names that people wouldn't have heard of that sound legitimate. And then you've got, you know, a, a lovely quote and then it says Matt Damon. And part of me thought, so I know Matt Damon's a very intel intelligent person, but I kind of think of it, I go, that doesn't sound like Matt Damon. This isn't, of course, what people are going to think. But for me, I kind of thought it would be nice having five names that you could guess that weren't celebrities. I quite like the idea of that. And, and the tying, I get it. You're tying it in with gossip and, and that's nice. Um, he's got this, I think he's got the stupid principle of how you fish for the words and the way they, you can find them. But for me, I, I'm, I could take that or leave it. There's so much in it without that. But some of you may look at that and go, actually, no, I can use that for this great thing. Or it can be a really light-hearted thing. Okay, who wrote that? Okay, Johnny Depp, and then you can do a presentation around that. But those celebrities to me are, you know, kind of fade into the background when you've got the power of the other stuff with this. There's a lovely ace assembly, which isn't an ace assembly, clearly, but you're assembling the, the emotions and you're putting a positive emotion, a negative emotion into positive emotions and that vanishes when you, when you spread the cards. So, so that, I thought, was really lovely. 
Um, Peter Nardi has this great thing where it's a very simple sort of poker deal thing, like I said, but you're putting the pictures together. So they're dealing out. It's not really a poker deal. They're dealing the cards, and what they're doing is dealing, without knowing it, all the pictures together. So all the mountains are together and all the sea is together. And, I, you know, it means you can, they can take any one of the piles, look at one, and you know what they're looking at. And it's those, again, royal road tricks that are kind of mathematical in principle, but just f would be complete magician foolers. And if it liars poker, yeah, I mean, so clever that, you know, they've shuffled the deck twice and you still know who's who chose what card without any kind of, you know, peeking or anything like that. And uh, by the way, there is loads of good ways to peek, but peek goes into the subtleties. Or if they're looking at that one, you know what one they're looking at, but you do it in a way that is professional. Isn't just like, have a look at that. Um, if you wear glasses like I do, these are fine as well. It just jumps out. Uh, at you after a while and I just think it's a really really solid product I have changed my mind in a way I thought it was good and now I think it's really good when something is hyped like this of course it creates such a huge level of expectation that there will be people that go oh it's just that but look into it look at the potential of it and start you know, thinking of your own stuff to do with it. And if you just want to do card tricks where the cards vanish or you do an ambitious card trick, there's a lot to be said in that as well. Maybe it would have been nice to have a little border on there. You know, not so it looks like a deck of cards, but w would give you a little bit more leeway if you do start wanting to do like triumphs and things like that. And again, if you think about the presentation of triumph, it does make sense. It's not just a card trick. So slop shuffles make complete sense. You know, Pete's got a, Pete Tanner's got a lovely thing if he does a slop shuffle as a separation as well. So each one of these videos give you loads of information, not just on this deck, but on some really good stuff that will enhance your mentalism and your magic. So it's a, you know, for whatever it is, forty dollars. The the deck itself is great, but you get hours of stuff that will, if you're a beginner, just give you so much to do that isn't going to take loads of sleight of hand and will give you a grounding in mentalism and magic which i think is lacking in a in a lot of releases i love a 20 minute download don't get me wrong but if it's going to be long i want it to be full of good stuff and i know this is becoming a bit of a trend especially with craig is to make hours of stuff but with this i think it's there's no real fluff. Yeah, there's a couple of tricks I thought, okay, you, you know, I won't do that because it, the, you know, they'll go crazy at the end. And I think, well, I don't want them to. I want them to be, I want this to be an intimate experience. Great for parlor and all that. But I think this for me would be sitting around with some people with some focus, maybe on stage, but really focused to just do a reading type thing, but with something that feels a bit different. Great product. There you go. Anything else I can do to slag it off so people don't think I'm being too positive all the time? I don't think so. Um, other than it isn't going to make you a better person. But it might make you a better magician. Uh, yeah, right. Think, Steve. Anything else? Oh, uh, loads, of course. There's loads to say and I've forgotten. But uh, there's Evoke from Craig Petty. Well done, you. Well done. It's a nice product and I didn't waste nine hours of my life. So thanks for that. Take care. Oh, have a look at onlinemagic.co, will ya? Thanks. And the podcast and all that. Like and subscribe. Bye.